What's up guys, it's Sam here at Ninja Kiwi, and as you may have seen on our Reddit, we're looking to give you all a little bit more of a sneak peek behind the scenes of our Dundee and Auckland studios. So with that, let's jump into Ninja Kiwi Insider Session number one. So joining us for the first of our Insider Sessions is Mike. Mike, thank you for joining me today. Uh, can you give everybody a little bit of background on you and what your role is here at Ninja Kiwi? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm Mike. I'm our Art Director at Ninja Kiwi Dundee. Um, I've been working here for almost 15 years. Uh, my role is to oversee all the visual styles and projects and all the work that goes into the, the fun, colourful side of our games. So you're the one responsible for making everything look as awesome as it does? Yeah, well, me and the team. <laughs> I'm responsible for taking credit for all our work. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> So we put out a call on Reddit to get a bunch of questions from the community to find out what they want to know about you. So shall we jump in? Yeah, sounds great. So question number one is from Illuminant and they ask, Hello, as a fan artist, I would absolutely love to know what you think of merges or people mimicking the official style and how yourself go about the process. A lot of us are dying to know. Um, I absolutely love fan art. I think it's like the biggest compliment you can get. Yeah. I mean, if someone wants to emulate your style, I mean, like, it just says, says the world about the stuff you're working on. I really do love seeing the stuff. We see guys have done you know, 3D printed stuff, we see lots of sketches, we see little doodles. Um, we often actually share the stuff into our own Slack channels and stuff yeah. at work when we see something we really like and genuinely absolutely love seeing it. It's just the, just the biggest compliment, I absolutely think it's fantastic. Yeah, and our fan art makes it into our internal weekly highlights and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly, when the stuff that gets pulled out, and sometimes I miss it and then someone else has found it on some other channel, I think, yeah, it's just awesome to see, like, how, how much more kind of, uh, sort of uh, appreciation can you get from your fans when they're trying to emulate your style or want to do some work in your in your game, that's just cool. Yeah, so you've heard it for the art director himself, more fan art because we love it. So question two is from Burnt As Heck Pancake and they ask, what is the process for creating a hero? How many concepts and drafts do you go through until you're satisfied with the design and then come up with attack, concepts, specs, etc.? How long does it take from start to finish? Oh, uh, well, that's a good question from a, a great name. Um, <laughs> I would say it's probably actually the other way around. I'd say we come up with our kind of attack styles and stuff first. Yeah. That's going to kind of influence what this hero is going to look or the hero is going to look like. Um, a good example would be uh, uh, Jericho in Battles 2. He was based on Cobra, as a lot of guys will know from Battles 1. Um, so we wanted to make a tower that was, you know, a bit different to the stuff we had in uh, Bo uh, Bloom's TD6, but taking on some of the style. Um, Cobra in the original Battles 1 game was based on a multitude of sort of heroes, action figures. We had uh, John McClane, Jason Bourne, all these guys in it. Um, and we want to take him a bit more kind of uh, CIA, James Bond in yeah. that sort of way. So that's why he ended up going in, in that direction. In terms of how long it takes, a good few months at least. And the sketches sort of go back and forth, then we do 3D models, kind of do it in tandem. Sometimes it's 3D first, sometimes it's 2D first. It just kind of depends on what the artist is making it kind of feels like and how they want to get across their um, their pitch. Yeah. And then that goes to designers back and forth with code. Um, and yeah, it takes a wee while, but once we kind of get the initial concept, it sort of flows a bit quicker, quicker than you'd imagine, just because you get in the zone and you sort of really enjoy, enjoy doing it. I suppose there'll be times where something gets implemented into a game and you play with it in a test build and might not feel quite right and you've oh, got yeah. changes you want to make. And All the time. Of. I'm sure our user base can, att can attest to that as well. <laughs> um, yeah, that definitely happens. And it'll, it'll kind of, it sometimes then influences the artwork. You might think, oh, actually, this is going to be more, it'd be cool if this was a magic weapon rather than just like a, a direct projectile weapon um, or something like that but yeah it's, it's really good it's a collaborative process and yeah. it's definitely not just the artists that think oh I want to make a hero that looks like this it's it's more what could this hero do and how do we then translate that onto screen awesome yeah. cool. cool question three comes from Zeeth Mainhart since we're asking a veteran artist of the studio what game did you personally really enjoy drawing art for whether it be the cute monkeys or the grotesque zombies which do you feel was the most fun creating uh, well, thanks for the call out for SAS. A lot of people forget about that. Um, yeah. I think, well, also, I thank you for the compliment of a veteran. I'll take yeah. that. I'm not just an old guy in the industry. Um, in here, yeah. <laughs> um, I think I really enjoyed working on the Balloons Monkey City mobile game. I really loved building all the buildings and the little monkeys that walk around the city and stuff. We were still, and we still are, a fairly small team, but we were pretty small then. Yeah. And the, sort of, the amount of artwork that went into that game was really quite, um, pretty awesome. Yeah. And more awesome, you might say. Um, and just being able to get to work on something in that sort of way with like wee buildings and cities and 
just kind of got to create more of a sort of world. I just really enjoyed that. And I think that was the first step where we took the characters really started to become our own. Yeah. And um, we'd gone from the sort of the wee black beady eyes of TV5, um, brought in some, uh, some sort of facial expressions from one of our fantastic concept artists based in Auckland, uh, TG. Um, I just love taking that into the, into what it became. Um, definitely one of my highlights, I think. And I guess with Monkey City, because it's the city builder aspect, there was a lot more sort of breathing room and what you could do with the yeah. towers and the buildings, and it gave monkeys a bit more personality than perhaps had like in the standard TD games. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like because you can really like play into the military side for your snipers or your aces and yeah. stuff. You could give them a nice little air base or or, or whatever, and then go a bit more magical with the with the um, you know the wizard and all this sort of stuff. But what I really enjoyed as well was then the sort of bloontonium side of it, like yeah. the, creating the the buildings to be able to research balloons. Uh, and all that stuff and like this sort of weird scientist lab kind of stuff we started to create and just yeah like you say they gave us so much more scope in what we could do um, and I'm a sucker for those sorts of city games that's what I kind of grew up with so it just yeah. really it was cool to work on something like that. Yeah some of those balloon research buildings are so fun like when you place them in your city I find myself just scrolling around like zooming in like yeah. oh look at that it's so cool. Yeah the guys really did a great job on the animations in that game uh, especially with it, it's built just sprites it's real kind of small um, small scale stuff yeah. and uh, they did a really good job uh, fantastic that was I think one of my highlights to have worked on. Great. So next question is from Epic001YT. Mm -hmm. What has been your favourite game to make slash design art for? And do you have any favourite pieces in particular that have been made? Um, I mean, similar to the previous question, I obviously really like Monkey City, but I also really liked what is actually behind <laughs> us. Um, I really loved getting the opportunity to work with the Adventure Time guys. Like, yeah. uh, working with Cartoon Network to bring our game into their, their world um, was pretty exciting. I think we did a really good job of emulating both styles. like pulling TD6 slightly towards their style whilst also really giving um, a good kind of uh, respect to their work. Um, we did some really cool animations with Jake and all his crazy abilities yeah. and stuff. That was really good fun. Um, in terms of an actual piece that I'm really proud of, this actually goes back to Monkey City, but I really love the spy balloons. Oh, they're so fun. It's such a <laughs> stupid wee drawing that I did, but I just, it's, it's probably one of my favourite things I've ever done in, in my years. Probably not just, your most time intensive no, bit of work. But but. Just, I don't know, the song about it, I just think they're great. Um, yeah. yeah, I think in, piece, in terms of a piece of work, that's probably one of my favourites, which is just a bit ridiculous, but I guess it kind of goes with the territory. Uh, weirdly satisfying to pop as well. Yeah, it's just, it's just good fun. Yeah. Okay, so next up is from I Strained. Which is your favourite art style between B3-5, BMC and B3-6? What was the thought process between changing art styles between games and when will the next change be? It's like picking your favourite child. Yeah, that's a tough <laughs> one. Um, yeah, there have all been such big evolutions from like from Bloons TD4, even before those ones. That was when we were still pretty pretty uh, small, limited in our sort of designs. Yeah. Um, and then TD5 was the first time when we really started to explore the characters. Um, BMC was a really wonderful shift, like I said earlier, it kind of changed, those characters became a bit more expressionable and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if people realise this, but um, BT5 when it first went to mobile was basically a direct port of uh, BT5 Flash. So yeah. it was very flat colours, the maps were just like plain green and stuff. And when we started experimenting with BMC, Bloons Monkey City, we realised we could probably push the BTD5 style a wee bit. So it actually gave us a, a time to do a 2.0 kind of um, movement on Bloons TD5 um, a couple of years after it came out. So that was quite cool. But I think in general, even though I really enjoyed working on Bloons Monkey City, I'd, I would say Bloons TD6 is probably my favourite art style. I think we've really found the characters. I think we've really found what they, who they are and stuff. Yeah. And just there's a lot to it. Um, in terms of, I think you asked uh, how the styles change and why and stuff. One of the reasons so for Monkey City, like one of the reasons the styles changed was because we had a larger team. Um, yeah. We could we could put more effort into into our work. And then Bloom's TD6, that, like I said earlier, the heroes and stuff, that actually was maybe a bit more influenced by game design than it was just necessarily an artist wanting to change things up. Um, we really wanted the Bloom's Tower Defense 6 to have, you know, line of sight blockers, actual 3D geometry. and that in itself then would kind of lead you to doing, you know, a 3D uh, style of game, which then influences a whole bunch of the of the 2D side of things and, and how that game looks. So yeah. once again, it's kind of like the just chicken and egg, which which comes <laughs> first. But uh, yeah. And of course, like on top of the 3D models and the 3D aspects of the maps, there's the new upgrade pass, so all the different portraits to come up with. For yeah, the that, I mean, when that was first pitched, that was uh, you could. 
the art team, you know, they feel it all kind of, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work in there. What's the 16 portraits per tower? You have yeah. one and five, five, five. Um, and then obviously all the little individual um, uh, cosmetic that change on cross paths. Luckily, we decided to do it just on the 3D models. <laughs> I think doing whatever the maths behind the cross paths of those all in portraits, I think would have just, I think would have just- APK yeah. size through the roof. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, Blues TV6, I think it's really got itself, uh, it's kind of nailed its style, I think. Yeah, agreed. Okay, next question. This is from Storm of Arrows. If you could retrospectively change anything about the art direction for any game on which you've worked, what do you think you'd alter, if anything? It's a tough question. That is a tough question, but I think the answer is actually quite easy. I think I would just say no. I wouldn't yeah. want to change anything. Um, even with like how different our work is and how much more, you know, it's come on leaps and bounds compared to like our original Bloons series and stuff. But it's a testament to where we were and what we've learned on the way. So yeah. our first games, they've got that charm. I think a big part of the Bloon series was that really simple monkey. Just like a few ovals throwing <laughs> a dart at Bloons. And then our billiard balls of TV5 characters, you know, they just sort of sit on the map. I think each one of them is kind of like a moment in time. Yeah, and of course. It's, it's like you said earlier, like picking your, your favorite child or whatever. It's, it's just what they are. Um, and, yeah. we, and we have learned so much of them. Um, we did at one point, when I said earlier, we, we changed the, the TV5 art style to match Monkey City a wee bit. We actually looked at pushing that even further, um, going for slightly more rendered monkeys, but it, it just wasn't quite right, and I'm, I'm really glad we didn't do that. I think that was us maybe responding too quickly to changing markets and thinking, oh, we better change this up to, to match the, the latest you know, tech. Yeah. Um, whereas I think there's a real charm to these things, and I, I don't think I'd ever want to change it. We've got some of our <laughs> oldest games up on the walls here, and yeah. I just think they're great. They're, they are what they are. And, yeah. you know. I agree. Like you say, like I think the individual art style for each of the, the Bloons games from then to now gives them their charm yeah, definitely. and it also allows for the evolution of what it started as and sort of what it's become now yeah. with with BTD6. Yeah exactly and also then allows us to you know think about the future as well and how we'll evolve with different games because if we just had it or we have to go back and it has to be Mickey Mouse from the start sort of yeah. thing you know we're limiting ourselves but if we allow ourselves to have, always have that slight elasticity to the style then we can keep moving forward and keep pushing and yeah. and and keeping it true to the original, I think, grounds you. It kind of gives you like a, a marker of, you know, of who you are and, and where, you, where you've gone to. Yeah, and the, not only that, but I think you touched on it earlier, but in the design process for all these things, it goes through numerous iterations before you're actually happy with it to yeah. go into a test build. So Definitely, yeah, yeah definitely, and especially with the artwork. I mean, a lot of the time, depending on um, kind of, you know, resources and time constraints, then, you know, I give the artists a lot of free reign to just go where they want to go and, and I'll just do critiques after the fact. But then at the same time, we'll have other times where it's a lot more collaborative and there's loads of back and forth. And, yeah. Um, I think to, to go back and change work from, you know, 15 plus years ago, Yeah. Um, uh, I just, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I love that stuff. I think, it, I think it is what it is, and it's good to kind of, kind of respect the past, I guess. Yeah, that, absolutely. That okay, a bit more of a technical question next from Winner Salt, and they ask, what software do you use for three D modeling, and do you model after a two D art style that the Tower Art has? Um, so we've kind of gone back and forth with this in Ninja Kiwi over the years. Um, we have used both Maya and Blender. Um, one of our games. Uh, uh, a few of you might have played um, Fortress Destroyer. That was made in Blender. That was one of our first sort of 3D games. Um, and then the the zombies in SAS4, uh, Zombie Assault, they were pre-rendered in Blender and then sort of rendered out as static images into a 2D game. Uh, Bloom's TD6 and Avenged Time behind me, they were made in Maya. Um, just because our artists had much more of a sort of a understanding there, we needed a larger team, so yep. it just made sense to use Maya. Uh, and Super Monkey 2 and Battles 2 are actually built in Blender again. So it's it's been a bit of a back and forth on which ones we're using. Um, and it kind of comes down to personal preference and also then what the what the sort of uh, requirements are for, for the project. Um, in terms of how it's developed, it's like I said earlier, it's it kind of goes half and half. It depends either what part of the team is on the project or on the tower or on the hero or whatever it is. If we go 2D first or we go 3D first. Some guys really like to just bash out in 3D, you know, just the simple shapes, just yeah. to get a kind of idea of what they're going with it. Some guys really like to go old school, go down on paper first. 
sketch something out and some some go into Photoshop. So again, it just depends on who's who's taking the, the, the task on. Um, I quite like if I'm getting a 3D artist to do some work um, for me, I quite like to paint over the top of their stuff okay. to kind of give them feedback, say you're aware you're missing stuff. And it's a good quick way of showing how, how silhouettes and stuff can be changed. But cool. yeah, really depends on the artist, which is just the way we work. Yeah, and you'll notice I just nod along and pretend to understand all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is a question from Dr. Dapper, and they ask, how was the transition from 2D to 3D artwork? Was everyone on board? Was it a tough transition? It seems like a huge paradigm shift, so I'm eager for any insights. Uh, yeah, Dr. Dapper, I would agree. It's a pretty big paradigm shift. Um, for us, obviously, we started off as Flash developers, um, so you know a lot of our stuff was just flat vector, um, very simple work. For us, it had been a long time coming. We've been looking at the state of the industry and where mobile games were going. Um, for a long time, mobile games stayed 2D, and that was kind of your, that was it. People weren't really touching it. If there was 3D, it was very kind of like gamer uh, sort of work. Yeah. Um, like I actually touched on earlier, we kind of moved towards 3D just because of the kind of the extra game side it would give us, like the line of sight and all that sort of stuff, blockers and things like that in Bloom's T6. I don't think at any point people weren't really on board. I think people were nervous because it is that shift. Yeah. Um, but when we sort of walk, uh, walked through it, talked about it and stuff, I think everyone kind of moved with it and thought, yeah, this seems like a good idea. Yeah. There are team members that still are very much 2D based and yeah, that's fine. We just keep those guys on the portraits, on UI, on effects, things like that that, mm -hmm. that don't require sort of 3D modeling. And that works absolutely fine for us. You know, they do our marketing and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it was, I think it was a good move. Um, it was a, yeah, say it was a long time coming, and yeah. it was all, it was scary because we did think to ourselves, are we going to lose our charm? But I think the, the team really did a, did a good job of making sure they, they captured the the, the balloons and Ninja Kiwi essence. I think if anything, it added to it with the, the little idle animations and everything like oh, that. Oh, definitely, yeah. and and the, the games themselves have allowed us to keep exploring that. You know, Balloon Steady Six first came out, and you had like you know your little placement animations and stuff like that. And then Battles 2 came on, because we were trying to play on this, you know, Quincy versus Gwen or whoever, that kind of gave us this, this time to have them in the spotlight and they can do something cool and kind of just having that three, I mean, we could never do that in 2D. We, yeah. Or if we did, it would take, you know, take days and days and days to do, to do anything. Whereas 3D, you know, you've got a little puppet that you can just... Make do what you want. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> within reason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. But that's, that's something I actually never thought of, apart from the visual aspect of things the actual gameplay impact of 3D, having blockers, line of yeah, sight, that sort of thing. Definitely, I think that that was probably more the, the, the kind of the move that, that kind of sell, sold it to us. Um, mm. Going to 3D for 3D's sake seemed scary because, you know, because of who we were. Um, but having the, right, okay, this is going to open up so many more avenues for us. Uh, it just it, it just made sense. And I think it's definitely a, a, a step we, we took in the, in the right direction. And then things like you know, Balloon Super Monkey 2, for example, the main menu was 3D and it just looked gorgeous. Yeah, and again, really we could have done that in 2D, but it would never have had the same sort of feel to it with the same sort of like level of detail. And there's just so much more stuff we can do with it. And especially when we've got so many talented artists in the team, yeah. we can we can do that. So. Yeah, going into Dr. Monkey's lab in BSM 2 is just yeah, never not fun. <laughs> yeah, and then go in and like spin them around and they get all dizzy. It's just wee stupid things it allows you to do. So. Yeah, it was it was a good move. It was just, it was scary, but I don't think anyone was particularly against it. It was just like convince me, and yeah. I'll be convinced. Uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so next question is from Pokefan R, and they've asked, did you make some or all of the tower upgrade designs, and if so, what's your favourite and why? Um, because of my role, where I get to sort of oversee everything and sort of work along kind of side everyone, I've not really done too much of like individual tower designs myself, uh, sort of in their entirety. Um, so usually I'm just in the, the in the role of just making sure stuff is looking right, keeping in style with the, the rest of the games, etc. Um, a couple of towers I did de design myself um, were the submarine in Bloons TD5, which I really love doing. Um, one of the upgrades in that, I think it's First Strike, is based on Sean Connery um, <laughs> uh, and his uh, wonderful Hunt from Red October um, That's awesome. uh, role. Uh, so he's still there, he's still there in uh, Blooms 2D6, still there with his big white beard, which, uh, which I really love. Uh, and then the Cobra as well was also one of mine, and that was good fun again, just sort of exploring where to, where to go, especially because like Jericho in Battles 2, Cobra was an exclusive for, uh, for Battles 1 on mobile, so yeah. it was good fun having the sort of free reign. Um, in fact, I think the Submarine might have been exclusive to TV5 yeah, mobile. Yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 so that was good fun as well, just having that sort of real sort of freedom to just explore and do what we kind of wanted. But yeah, in general, 
I'm overseeing what the guys are doing, um, so rather than kind of getting into the nitty gritty. Um, Seeing something go from like sketches to a, an actual thing must be pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, it's really good, especially with like the, the talent we have uh, on hand here in both studios. The fact that when you're giving feedback and stuff to, to the artists, you, you, you know you're, you're going to get something great out of it. Uh, yeah. And sometimes it's really good actually to, to be that kind of like mentor role, that director role where you can sometimes an artist might not feel as enthused with what they're working on as, as they might, or they might be a, you know kind of struggling to get the best out of what they think they can do and stuff. And you can come along and, you know, you can see the wood for trees type thing because yeah. you're seeing it from a different angle. And you can come in and kind of point them in the right direction and, and then you see them sort of, oh, okay, I see, yeah, I'll, I'll do this and I'll, or I can change my approach. Or, and that's really good fun. So even if we're not getting to do stuff directly all the time, being able to just steer is, is really great. Yeah, okay, so we're almost there. <laughs> Next question is from Clev Clev and they've asked, if you were to make SAS 5, would the art direction stay the same? Uh, oh, well, I guess it's been a wee while since SAS 4 came out. Yeah. Um, so I think it probably makes sense for the style to evolve if we were to do that, like we have done with our other games and our other series. Of course. Um, I think it probably makes sense if we were to revisit that to go 3D with it, just because of where we are, with the team we've got, we've got such talented guys, and like the stuff you mentioned earlier, if, imagine you brought in like stupid wee dances and stuff like that into your zombies or something, or celebrations or, or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, I would like, if I was to revisit that, I'd like to evolve it, uh, bring it into 3D, um, you know, maybe change the camera angle or something to give you a bit more sense of the world. Um, yeah, keep it nice and gritty like, like we had, but I'm always a sucker for getting colour into our games. So yeah. if I was to do that, yeah, I'd probably try and make you, maybe make some, bring it into some kind of 3D, maybe a bit kind of painterly, give it a bit of texture, yeah. um, something like that, which would make it gritty, but kind of make it its own thing and kind of keep keep Ninja Kiwi standing out. And, and yeah, yeah, I don't think we, we'd need to evolve it. I think. Yeah. yeah, that wasn't a SAS pipe hint there, was it, Mike? I, I, I couldn't say. <laughs> Right, okay, we'll move on. Okay, so final question from Chain YT. What is your favorite design that you've ever done? That's a broad question. Uh, what, Ninja Kiwi? Um, <laughs> favorite design I've ever done. Um, I really like doing a lot of the marketing stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could go back and say spy balloons, obviously, because yeah. I love doing those. Um, but no, I really like it when we get to do like one-off little events. Um, there was one event in Monkey City, actually, which I was really proud of. It was. Um, I think we had like aliens invading your city. Yeah. And we did the whole marketing sort of like in a B movie style poster, which I but it's just Yeah, that fun. was really fun. Um and similar to that, I've, there's a there's a monkey um this thing's Cripple Moab in T V six, um, which is like the sniper in the full ghillie suit, you know, goggles and stuff. And I made an avatar for Battles 2 based on him uh, sort of Adorned in the front cover of an old like World War II comic. That's my current battles too. Oh, no, no, <laughs> there good you go. taste. Uh. Um, you can also buy a T-shirt in the store with that. Yeah. Um, Link below. Yeah. Um, no, I really like that because it was like it's like real simple, big, broad brush strokes. I don't do a lot of that. I do a lot of clean vector stuff. You know, especially UI, especially just our style is very clean cut. Um, so I really love being able to just kind of get the paintbrush out and just go a bit rough with it. Um, yeah. So I, I really enjoyed doing that. And yeah, we get a lot of marketing stuff like that. Um, in fact, there was uh, an image I did recently for St. Andrew's Day 2023, um, a picture of Mac Oban. Yeah, um, that was cool. <laughs> uh, which was just me and the, uh, the art team were just mucking around one day with ideas of potential things. And I said, oh, we should do like a Mac Oban. <laughs> and I just did this really quick, uh, crappy sketch. And um, I came back and yeah, we just thought, hey, we should do something for St. Andrews this year. And I'm like, oh, I've got that guy. So It was very much a freedom image. <laughs> yeah, and it was good. I mean, that took me like half an hour or something because it was already there in the background. Well, there's no need to show off. <laughs> so, so, but the stuff like that's really good fun because you just get to just throw stuff at the wall sort of thing yeah. and, and see what happens. But yeah, I think the thing in the games I'm probably most proud of is it's probably that avatar. I just, I just really like it. It's, yeah. it's dead simple. Like, it cuts back to my roots of being a sort of more of a painter and stuff. and just fun to get to do that sort of stuff. Yeah, and with the marketing stuff, I guess like you've set on what's going into the game, but you get to adapt on it even further if yeah. you can make the marketing. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah you could choose to do a different style for the game because it might to suit. Like we had um, our Lunar New Year recently was. Uh, oh, that was a lovely. Image, yeah, yeah, and it was drawn by one of our really talented artists here, um, 
and she just wanted, she really wanted to do this image and did it in that sort of style of kind of watercolour painting and it's just great, you spend a bit of time on it and yeah, it's completely different to the game style but you know, you know it's get blown straight away, it's yeah, got the, the, the good monkey styled heads and stuff and yeah. yeah, you get to really play with it and I think that, I really enjoy that stuff because you can kind of escape sometimes as well, yeah. say um, there's been a lot of like updates or there's been a lot of kind of like pressure on just work being able to have a bit of a breather and, and do stuff like that, I think, is always really good. To scratch the creative itch a little yeah, bit. Yeah, definitely, yeah. We've had some really good, fun ones. Um, there's another avatar I did for Battles 2, which I think is, is it King versus Fusty? Or oh, I can't remember what it says, but it's um, Sentai versus Fusty, and it's all like Japanese um, Godzilla-style yeah, poster. Mean, yeah. And that was just really fun. It's just like, just muck around and just do something a bit different. There's a t-shirt of that as well, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> right, we need to stop plugging the merch. <laughs> Okay, so that was the last of our questions from Reddit, and um, so we're going to move on to a quick fire round where we've got 10 questions, just simple one word answers. You ready? I'm not ready for a one word answer, but yeah, <laughs> sure. Question one PlayStation or Xbox? Xbox. iOS or Android? iOS. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Summer or winter? Well, I mean, I've got a ski boot here. <laughs> um, you're a sucker for the slopes. I'm a sucker for the slopes, but I'm also a sucker for a cold beer on a hot day. I'm going to have to push you for an answer, Mike. Uh, summer. PC or Mac? PC. Well, you can all fight in the comments about that one. Uh, Favourite non-NK game? Oh, Command & Conquer. Easy. Easy. Favourite Bloons TD hero? Uh, Jericho. Least favourite hero? Ah, uh, Quincy. He's just full of himself. Yeah, he thinks nothing gets well, past yeah, exactly. his Yeah, exactly. I see loads of things get past <laughs> his ball. Favourite tower? Um, I'm going to be really selfish and say submarine. Yeah, it's mine. I like it. Yeah, yeah, why not? And finally, favourite NK game? Uh, ooh, I I really loved Battle Panic. Ooh. On Flash. We Good did a choice. sort of version of that for Apple Arcade, Red Rain kind of. Battle Panic inspired. I loved that game, that was great. I loved that game, was not good at that game. No, I could probably get a couple of levels in and then. Yeah. Yeah. Same with Bloons actually, the first Bloons game. I had to actually, when we put Bloons 2 onto mobile, uh, in fact I think just onto iOS, um, myself and one of the other guys here had to record ourselves doing all the solutions and oh my god, that took me, <laughs> a, that took me a long time. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine it would. <laughs> Great, so that was all the questions we had for you. Thanks to everyone who asked the question on our Reddit post and keep an eye out for more in the future. That'll wrap things up for the first ever Insider Sessions. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. If you enjoyed it, please let us know in the comments below and we'll catch you in the next one.